Iranian authorities have shut down dozens of coffee shops and restaurants for allowing what the government considers immoral and un-Islamic behavior. Police officers and members of the so-called morality police raided 87 cafes and restaurants in a single district, arresting women for disobeying the Islamic dress code and shutting down coffee shops that allow women to smoke hookah pipes. The latest crackdown comes after Iran barred women from watching the Euro 2012 football championships in public spaces and banned Barbie dolls, as well as dolls of characters from American cartoon show The Simpsons. Goreme in central Anatolia, its famous rock formations make it a magnet for tourists. But these two men are not on holiday. They're Iranian press photographers who fled to Turkey for safety. After the elections in Iran, for me and many other journalists, things got so bad I felt my life was in danger, especially after two other photographers were arrested. Hossein and Javad both worked for FARS, the Iranian government news agency, but both were secretly sending pictures of the post-election protests and the government crackdown to foreign press agencies. One of Javad's photos ended up on the cover of Time magazine. They would delete straightforward photos we had taken, saying, this picture is against Islam. But having escaped the Iranian authorities, they were sent to a remote Turkish town, already hosting more than 500 Iranian refugees. Ibrahim Metari is another Iranian political refugee in Turkey. He told us about the brutality he suffered in a Tehran detention center in August, how he was shackled, burnt with cigarettes, whipped with a metal flail and sexually abused with a baton. I don't have the mental strength to describe what happened to me. This regime tries to portray itself as the most morally upright in the whole world. But in our prisons, throughout the whole ruling system, it spreads only lies and immoralities. The Iranian government denies rape or violation takes place in its jails, but Ibrahim Metari has a medical report consistent with all his claims. But even in Turkey, he says he's being harassed. A house he stayed in is being watched. And two months ago, he says he was accosted by a stranger speaking in Farsi. He told me, stop talking, stop raising these issues, or it's very easy for us to deal with you. Ibrahim Metari was one of a small group of web-savvy professionals who ran opposition candidate Mir Hussein Musavi's campaign, but afterwards shared information about efforts to overturn what many believe was a rigged election. For a long time now, you haven't been able to find either Islam or Republic in our Islamic Republic. Now threats are also arriving by email. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard has vowed to track down and silence exiles all over the world who speak out. These refugees can only hope the Turkish authorities will protect them. Today, we want to talk about Iran's increasing executions. I myself am a victim because the Ayatollahs have killed my father, Mohammed. Now, let's get down to the facts. 1,600 executions in less than two years, 115 hangings in just two weeks, and execution every seven hours. These are the stats of the moderate Rouhani era. The Ayatollahs have the highest execution rate per capita. The UN said many of the executions were not reported at all, meaning the actual number is much, much higher. We must rise against the Ayatollah's flagrant human rights violations. The Iranian diaspora has always condemned these executions in their annual 100,000 strong rallies along with Iranian resistance president-elect Mrs. Maryam Rajab. It is a film Iran doesn't want the world to see. The stoning of Saraya M is based on the true story of a woman brutally killed after being falsely accused of adultery. <laughs> Soraya is stoned to death in her Iranian village under Islamic Sharia law. The film is a graphic portrayal of a grotesque form of public punishment still endorsed by the Iranian government. But its director says some European countries have been reluctant to support screenings, fearful of antagonizing Iran's hardline regime already at loggerheads with the West. I think that's really sad. I think that to sort of 
capitulate to that kind of thuggery is, um, is not really consistent with Western values. I mean, freedom of speech, freedom of creative expression, political discontent, these are things that we all value. The Iranian Penal Code stipulates that the stones must be big enough uh, to cause people damage, but small enough not to do it too quickly. So it's a deliberately slow and cruel punishment. But human rights groups fear this woman, convicted of adultery, will be next. A campaign to save the life of Sakina Mohammadi Ashtiani has gained international momentum. The stoning of Soraya M serves as a painful reminder of the ruthlessness of the Iranian government, past and present.